Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase on location at the headquarters of Mini GT. And sure enough, look who's with us. Hi. It's Glenn, director at Mini GT, is with us. Glenn, how's it going? Good, good. Like a you know, few weeks off after Germany, and now we are back to work. And you got some work you're working on. I mean, a <laughs> lot of stuff you're working on, and that's why I'm here, because we want to talk about this. Yeah, you've had a very busy schedule. You were in, I think, Japan earlier this year, right? Yeah, I was uh, in Tokyo for the auto salon, and then um, come back, I go to Daytona 24 Hours, which we are sponsoring, we yeah. photograph and you know, taking data for the, the new race car. Then from there, we go directly to Germany. So it's crazy trips. <laughs> We're sitting here when we're filming this in February, and you've already been like all over the world. Yeah, it was like a um, little bit cold, not snow, but quite cold in Tokyo. Yeah. And then you go to Daytona, it's like summer. Right. You had like 74 degrees, right. and we were wearing t shirt. And then I had to put on a big jacket and go to Germany, where it's you know, zero degree cold again. <laughs> and you are a Californian, so you're used to the mild weather, but yeah, you did it. You did it. You survived. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So we are here for a very specific purpose. There has been a lot of buzz about what Mini GT unveiled oh, a few weeks ago, right? And there's been some images of these models. We are talking James Bond, right? And, yeah. you're, and Mini GT will be launching a James Bond series. You're going to get into some of the details on some of these. We're going to look at these kind of close up. But let's start, if we can, like give us a little bit of the background on kind of how this is coming about. Well, I mean, if we zoom out a little bit, in general, um, uh, you know, when we do product planning for Mini GT, yeah. we always want to bring something different. Not, yes, we make cars different color, you know, like typical collectors, you know, car typical collectors want. Sure. But we always want to put in some models that is unique and, and one that people try something different. So, for example, we did the, the Lincoln Caprice last yeah, year, yeah. and that's our take on American Classic. <laughs> and then the Formula One cars as well, the, the Red Bulls, F1s, and pit crew figurines. Um, James Bond's been in my mind for actually uh, many years. The the discussion with James Bond started up probably six years ago. Really? Yeah. And then um, and we had some discussion. We had to we had to go get support from Austin Martin Lotus to to you know yeah, James Bond so right. to get some <laughs> some traction to help. Sure, know. sure. Uh, and then we hit COVID. Everything stops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for a few years. Which is the story and everything. Yeah, yeah. and then, then we get in touch again. So uh, for me, um, I'm a big James Bond fan. You know, when I was little, that was the coolest thing. Yes. So the, you know, the guy wears a suit, looks super handsome with beautiful ladies yeah. and nice car. You yeah. know, like. so, so for me, I always want to have um, this good collection of James Bond models, but I wasn't able to, to get a nice one. I mean, uh, it, it, even in different scale, you see you know, a piece here, a piece there, you are never able to have a good complete collection with consistent quality. Right. That, that is important for me, consistent quality. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, Which we've learned with yeah. Mini GT, yeah. <laughs> so um, now with the Mini GT, um, it starts gets me thinking, yes, we, we have TSM model, we have top speed, we have other brands that I can make as big as a 1.8 behind yeah. me. Or, but um, I, I, I'm able now to create a collection it's still a fairly large collection, but at least in a more affordable price range with accurate detail, nice yes. details. Yes. You know, that, that you look at it, you know, when James Bond wear a $4,000 suit with an Omega watch, yeah. you have a very nice model car, like kind of connected to it. In that, in that vein, right? Yes. High quality and all that. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. I'll give a couple of thoughts from my perspective too, is like, it's not a surprise you grew up as a James Bond fan. I did too. Just like there were per, there were particular elements, and for car nerds like yourself, James Bond was kind of among a lot of other you know a lot of films and things, TV shows. But James Bond very much had that connection, like say Fast and Furious does today. Yeah. Introduces you to a particular kind of car, but like such an introduction to certain models, certain elements that I think are really cool. And then, yeah, you add that element of that elevated element of James Bond, you know, yeah, the, the watch, the suit, the martini, <laughs> um, all that kind of stuff, which is really cool. So that's, that's my take too. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of, rep, of replicas of James Bond cars 
from various brands and they're cool. Yeah. But that's my other take for you. And I mentioned this to you earlier is James Bond or like mini GT when mini GT takes on a project, whether it's formula one cars or Liberty walk or a Lincoln Capri or whatever, it's going to be a very particular, that's what I think we always get excited. Oh, mini G is going to take on this car. And I think that's the excitement. We've seen replicas of these cars before, but we haven't seen Mini GT take it on, right? Yes. Um, it's, for me, it's, it's very... Um, I personally put in a lot of the, my time and resource into this project. Um, I kind of... like It's like my dream project. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I keep thinking, you know, am I able to create a, a James Bond collection even 20 years later? I will look at it and I'm still happy with it. Yeah. And that's the angle I'm trying to approach. I'm trying to do uh, this series. Um, and I get hit by the same question from the, the movie studio. They were like, well, we got many partners and, um, you know, we did it with a couple of different companies. Sure. Why should we need another partner in right. 164? And I told him, I said, yeah, I have left my, I have those collections in my collection, but I'm not happy. Um, I mean, it, it, it doesn't look right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't think it was the image of James Bond, the, the nice car, the, the, the elegant, the suit, the everything, all that message, that movie delivered. Yeah. You don't have a partner delivered the model car. You it's have toy body. versions of them, yes. but that but James Bond that's not toys. Yeah. So I distressed to him, say, sure, and we couldn't do a big program. We won't be in Walmart or Target and we cannot sell to the children or and all that. But lot I want to create one for people like my age or whoever appreciates the detail, the refine, the collection yeah. that can really sync with the vibe of the James Bond movie series. And and uh, and after they, they saw a couple sample, I had to do a couple quiz. Yeah, <laughs> they, were they challenged me. you. They, challenged they took me. you on. Yes, yeah. and then I, I had to explain to them, and 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 they buy. It. So we we, we started the project, and I had a meeting with them a few weeks ago, um, and. They were really happy with the, the first prototype. So um, I think we got a good start. Um, we just need to finalize the execution. And, and um, um, I'm really excited to to show this and share this with all the collectors. Oh, I and I'm excited to get into yeah. this. I think it's cool. You know, obviously, there's the whole process of licensing, right? You got to yeah. get it approved. But it's kind of cool that they said they challenge you. Like, you know, if you're going to do this, we got to see a what you know and b what you can bring to the table that makes these unique. And so, what we as collectors are going to benefit from is that process, right? Kind of like yeah. what you want to do with it, and then what they expected you to do with it, right? Yes. To to make it unique. For for example, we were talking about the DB five, and yeah. then um, I was explaining to them um, according to what we can see and what we can find. The first DB five in Goldfinger movies is actually the prototype. It's the first prototype DB5. It's not even a production car. So it, really? it had a, a side marker, a wrong side marker, just behind the front wheels. And, yeah. it, the, re and the production doesn't, DB5 doesn't have that. that. Yeah, so the second car comes from uh, Thunderbolt. So you, you see some car has it, and some yeah. car doesn't have it. So that, then, then you know where it's like car number one, car number two doing switch in between. In the movies? In the movies. And some of the, the photograph, you can see that too. So you, I mean, this is a total nerd out in that yeah. some of these cars have the side marker. That's the prototype. If you don't see the side marker in the movie, that's it's a car the number two. Yeah, that's a production. And car you're number. differentiating the two of them. Yes. So we have the little side marker imprinted behind, and that was pretty impressive for them. They were like, "Oh, I was like, yeah, <laughs> get a little bit crazy and a little bit nerdy." <laughs> that's um, the whole point. The whole that's point. the whole point. Yes. That's fantastic. So you can see that. So look, that's something to look for is you'll see the side markers on the early versions of these replicas that you're doing. And, yeah. and, and well, and that, tell me about that. I mean, it's like, like, are these, are these the first models we're going to see? Are these DB5? Yeah. Um, the first launch, um, there are a few questions we get asked. Cause I um, see four here. Yes. So we have four here. You have the, the Goldfinger one with all the, um, you know, most of the gadgets, um, open up. Um, then you have, um, we did, which is essentially the same, the Thunderbolt car that with all the gadgets close. Okay, so you said, so just to, let's stop there. So you have two gadgets open and gadgets closed yes, with, those, the, with the first two, with the first two DB5s. Yes, those are the two 
the most original DB5, you know, one is I said earlier to the prototype, and second one was the first one of the earlier production car. So that would be using in uh, Goldfinger and Thunderbolt. In Thunderbolt. Yeah. So they so, and what I see here, if I pick these up, I see like this one, obviously, yeah, gadgets out, right? You've got yeah. the bumper pieces that come out in the front and the back. You have this tire shredding gadget on the on the wheel and then this is the same car essentially only with all the gadgets closed so, yes and we purposely removed the side marker so to make it car number two <laughs> that's the nerd out that you're yes. talking about yeah so this one so i'm looking so there's not a side marker on there's side marker on one not yeah. on the other yes outside of all the gadgets yeah now to clarify these these like the the gadgets on these they're not they don't move. We're just like, you have two different versions. So you can see it with the gadgets out and with the gadgets in. Yes. I mean, the, the gadgets are fixed. They are not move. I mean, we could make it movable, but everything become bigger and not to the scale. And and the, the gap will be much bigger. So you become more tallish look. Yes. You won't have that refined look you have now. And and which, you know, is not my target. So we decided to, to fix all the gadgets. Yeah. So we get two cars instead yeah. of one, but <laughs> yes. and, and which is no complaint. And then I agree, like the minute you have to start doing moving parts, especially at this scale, you have to add pieces that are going to throw off the proportion and things yes. like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I no complaints for me because I, I think my complaint was that it, mm -hmm. these cars become more toy like, right? Yeah. When they when you have to add that. Um, these were from Goldfinger. This is where the DB5 first shows up, right? Yes. This is the, the star of James Bond car culture. Yes. This is the beginning. This is where it all started. Yes. Is Goldfinger. I have to go back and watch all the movies <laughs> again and figure out, and I, you know, there's a billion cars that we can get into. Yeah. Um, but remembering this, so these came from Goldfinger was that first one. And then obviously we saw it quite a bit after it was a Goldfinger Thunderbolt. And then, and but so those, these two are yes. the Goldfinger cars. Yes. What about these two? Um, this one is from the final movie where um, the car has been restored. It you know, happened in, in, in the- That was movie. the final movie, meaning like the Daniel Craig. The Daniel Craig. Uh, that's where <coughs> you have a, a, a modern, larger machine gun coming out from the headlights. Right. Yeah, and then it doesn't have the bulletproof um, shield from the back. Okay, now this is, I, I know this is, <laughs> and this is where we're getting into the yeah. super, super details. In fact, I want to show this, because this is something when I was looking at these, is this has the closed shield, this Goldfinger, yes. the Goldfinger closed gadgets in version, right? Yeah. But it's not some tampo that you just printed on. You you tooled this to show the shield closed, right? Yes. And then further nerd out, the later version didn't have one at all. So in yeah. your research, you're like we can't put that there, so we can't tool that up again. We yeah. have to completely redo it yeah. without the shield open or closed yes. in the back. Actually, this is still not the final part because the escape hatch on the roof is different size too. So you're going to change that? We're going to change that. Oh, man. <laughs> the shape is a little bit different. <laughs> so those are the, that's the minute detail that we're getting. Yeah. So it's like if we get a replica of this car, yeah. specific car A from this movie, we're going to get it designed for that very specific yeah, as close version. as possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, within that scale. Yeah, and, and this... Personally, it's one of my favorite cars. It's the um, the clean DB5 yeah. in Casino Royale and in Bahama where he won the car, the key at the poker table. Yeah. And and so the car is actually left hand drive with a Bahama license plate. That is and, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting, again, there are details on that one. That's a clean, wasn't bonded up. There was no gadgets on it because yes. he won it in, the, in yes. the poker. Yes, and that's where he, you know, gave the wife or well, put the villain yeah. right and then took her back to the room yes. <laughs> the bond style yeah, very much bond style yeah yes. and and we, we we got a couple more coming for example um in skyfall they have um another db5 that you know fight and shoot out machine gun right that, uh scratch and bullet damage we will create that one as well yeah, so it's so cool. So we're so we got these four first four coming, and then we'll have other versions in the future. Yeah, the first four release will be the uh, Goldfinger and Thunderbolt DB5 open close, and then okay. will be um, the 750 
and Tomorrow Never Die and Spectra CX75, which is also one of my favorite cars. The Jaguar. The Jaguar. Well, let's talk about those. Okay, so so actually two questions. We'll get yes. into the specifics of these models, but you mentioned the release. Talk, talk to us a little bit about, like, I mean, obviously, I'm sure it's not all yeah. finalized, but what we should, A, when do you think we'll see these, and B, how do you see these being distributed or, the, or released? The, the the plan is we're going to do a quarterly order. It's a special order sheet. So okay. you have three to four cars. Separate each. from the normal Separate. Mini GT. Yes. And then okay. so you get one order, uh, a one pre-order every quarter. And then um, it's a three-year program. So we calculate roughly about you know, 35 to 40 cars. Um, it will include bounce car. We categorize them to bounce car, bounce girls car, yeah. sidekicks car, and yeah. villains car. <laughs> awesome. You have four type. Yeah. So we try to pick, you know, the obviously legendary, you know, car, and there's also some fun cars in between. So, Got it. Um, and the first one um, we try to push uh, for middle of this year. Um, we still a bit learning curve because sure. it's it's very complicated. Um, uh, a, a, a licensing process because he deals with various different car company and then bonds and everybody has sure. to say so uh, uh, everything and then um, uh, one more thing that will be um, unique about this program is um, it will be all blister pack oh they will yeah they will be okay. uh, uh, own all blister pack uh, the back car will be uh, the movie poster itself really yeah and not just movie poster we actually will have different movie poster for different region. So for example, Japan will get the official Japanese movie poster in their blister pack. American, of course, you know, we get American yeah. and then not, um, then for example, Hong Kong will get their Chinese movie poster pack. Wow. Nah. Nah, uh, and this will, there will be some inconsistency because there's not, you don't have movie poster in different language for every movie, sure, every region. Sure, sure. So, you, you know, for example, Japan, you could, you pretty much have all the movie poster, but not Hong Kong or so it'll be a little bit different. But but we'll, where you can do it, you're gonna do it yeah, regionally. We're do it, yeah. So oh, we'll, that's so cool. We'll make it so cool that people re recognize that. Wow, there's different movie poster yeah. for the same movie. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> so again, so open them or close them, you're gonna ha or keep them sealed. You're gonna have some cool ways to display these. Yes. Yeah, and then we will have actually accessory to go with it um, later in the year. For example, we will have a display case with James Bond graphic. And then so you can put your car inside with a little sticker like from which movie. Really? So you can put it under. Okay, yeah, so you're going all out. You're <laughs> yeah. going all out. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to plan the whole program from a, a big James Bond fans, like how yeah. am I going to do this? Yeah. And now, I mean, it's like a kid's in toy store. <laughs> like, yes, I can do this, like what I want and how I want to do it, so. Well, like, it's, it sounds like to me, too, it's like if you, like, you being the Bond fan, yeah. it's very easy for you to say, I want this. Like, yeah. this is what I would want. As yeah. it, so then you can kind of go from there and kind of build yeah, it. Up. It was really interesting because we were uh, at the early proposal stage. We were telling them what cars we want to make. And um, there was a, a DBS um, in, the, in the scene with Skid Chase and, and Scratch, and yeah. Bullet, and actually lose one of the door. So I was like, but I want to make that. Yeah. We saw the door with yeah. all the scratches. It's like, oh, cool. I was like, yeah, but I'm not sure if car company will allow me to right. do it. Right. Oh, Mr. Chow, don't worry. We make it happen. Really? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> there is a totem pole, isn't there? I there know, is a but, hierarchy. But, um, but then I had to go back to challenge my engineers. I saw how we're going to do all that scratch. And my yeah. engineer was joking. He's like, well, just take this and then scratch it yeah. <laughs> on the sandpaper. And, so, so we're having a lot of fun with uh, this series. Um, it's really a, a, a very unique opportunity for us, but we are also very excited. And, and for us, it's also um, a way for us to show our, our fans and collectors that, you know, we are just like them. We are nuts, you know, for cars and models yeah. and we think like them and, and, and show them what we want to, our take of the James Bond vehicle. It's fantastic. All right, I want to get into some more of these models because sure. we see a lot of the DB5s. You said in the first release, we're going to see the BMW and the Jag. So give us a little idea of what these are. So um, you have the Jags from 
Spectra, I mean, you know, from the bad guy who yeah. was chasing it, the orange car. Uh, CX-75 is also a very special car for me because I'm a big fan of XJ220 from sure. Jaguar. Yeah. And I see this is really a successor, even the, the design, the shape. So Very similar. Yes, yeah. and I'm a, a OEM supplier for Jaguar. I am very close with JLR, um, and I was really happy to see this car when you know, doing that stage. But it was a bit sad for me when they killed the program. They decided you know, it's they were there. It's it's almost ready, and they were like, well, you know what? It didn't they, go into production. It right? didn't go into production. But they have many, they have 10, 12 different prototype build. So they decided to put it in a movie, maximize their yeah. investment yeah. in 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 this car. So and and so it's all always have a special place in my heart about this car. Um, the BMW was the, the cool because that was when Nokia before iPhone yes, dominated yeah, the world yeah. and was little. I actually I did challenge my engineer to make the Nokia phone. Really? They were like, Glenn, put it in perspective. <laughs> You're talking about a little plastic piece the size of Japanese rice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Like, so yeah. you would look like a little bit a uh, 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 residue from <laughs> plastic. We, we were heading in that direction where the smaller the phone, remember that? Before the yeah. iPhone, the smaller the phone, the cooler the phone. So you could have had like a little grain of rice size I, uh, phone. You would have been really cool in like, what, 2004 or yeah. something like that. So I was like, okay, so probably a bad idea because I was like, can we make it a phone? I want the phone 164. <laughs> I was like, it's not happening. <laughs> But we were able to um, recreate it. The bumper is open with the gadgets, the, the rockets on the roof, the cable cutter. Yeah, I'm from. trying to remember all of the features that car had. Yes. It was quite a few. Yeah, there's quite a few. So so it, it's a very unique car. So we feel this together is a very good mix, a little bit modern. Sure. This is very recent. This is like in the middle. Yeah. And then you have the the, the, the first two cars to, to, so, to launch. So we have... We have classic Connery. Yeah. We have Pierce Brosnan with the Beamer. Yeah. And then the Jag was the, Daniel Craig, Daniel but Craig. it was the villain's car, it's right? Was car. that was that Javier Bardem? Was I don't know. That wasn't. That's the actor, I think. Yeah. I think I've got a like I said. I got yeah. a lot of movies to watch to catch yeah. up. That's. So. I remember that was when he sneaked into one of their meetings and then he tried to get away and they were chasing. Him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's a great mix. So we'll see these four, most likely. Yeah. They're this, still... Yeah, this is actually fixed in our It's schedule. done. This okay. will be the first four car for the first order. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then we'll see those other two DB5s. And then I see over here some other stuff. Yes. Tell us, and obviously, early, early prototypes. Yeah, so, of course, we have the, you know... Uh, a DB10. We have the Lotus, the submarines, the the you know all the Austin. Here you can pick those up if you want. What's the? It's got the yeah. So we have the 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 DB10. We have Lotus is an important part for us. Um, I'm also a big Lotus fan. Um, the submarine is quite special. I spent a so lot. So again, same thing. We're getting two different versions yeah. of the Lotus. We, we spend a lot of time with the submarine to study how they build the real submarine a lot of time on yeah. the bar. So for example, all these shields around the windows, there's actual glass behind it. So we were talking about how we recreate that layers of difference. So we're yeah. still going to have the real transparent glass behind it. And then we're going to print, you know, layers of the block line to simulate that sh uh, metal shield. Wow! Yeah, uh, we got pretty crazy because actually I photographed some of the the uh, manufacturer label on all those, you know, propellers. Yeah. And my guys, I hate Glenn Chill. <laughs> <laughs> It's not happening. I mean, <laughs> our printer couldn't make a label that like, little. <laughs> that is, well, I mean, but that's the point, right? Yes. They'll have to pull you back occasionally, but you want to overshoot yes. and, then, and then figure it out. Yeah, right? so you have a little bit periscope here. You have the antennas. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and, and we, would, we do have interior. That's important, actually. Behind all of that. Yeah, because, I was like, no, I say, we couldn't have interior. I said, how are we going to create it? So, you know, we look at the movie. Yeah. And, you know, he's driving, and it's still basic Lotus interior. So we modified it from the movie and take a Lotus interior and come back and create interior. So although you couldn't see it, I assume when we, when we get there, you couldn't see it from here. Right. But you'd be open and open it up. If there you still be seen. Rip it open, you'll find it. Yeah, you'll find it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then I see, um, so that's the Lotus. Yeah. And then we've got... The Vintage, Austin. Beautiful. Yeah. What movie was that one from? 
You got me. I know. I know. I know. There's so many. There There's so, so many. many. But it's. But we'll obviously see yeah. the poster with it when it's released. This one. I mean, obviously, like I said, we don't we can't get the sense of the of the finish, but you get a sense of what the, it's going to look like, the shape, and everything else. And this one will be. I don't remember if this one had gadgets or not. No, uh, this, uh, this just... one will be later the year. I would say okay. this is early next year uh, project. Okay. We're still moving around because it depends on the data. For example, on the DB5, yeah. we actually did a 3D scan of a car in fine California. Oh, really? So we scan a, a real car and we use it to, as a base to modify. So, it, it, I mean, we have an initial plan, but it all goes, you know, product approval, data, information, then combined, right. we, we make adjustments. So, we're, you're, in the, you're in various stages of processing these as you yes. go. Yeah. yeah. And we've got, so we've got the Vantage, we have, and I see the Mustang yeah. there in the back. We want to have a couple of different Mustangs in the movie, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a quite big program. We have to... We had to create about eight tooling per year just for James Bond movie. Wow. Yeah. And they're also different. Yeah, they are all different. So that is on top of regular mini GT program. Yeah. We had to create eight tooling per year just for James Bond. So this Bond. is just more work. Yeah, but fun work. work. Yeah, the, the, the one I, I mean, it, we, we have many products, you know, we have quite big ranges. You, you get burned out just like any other job. Sure. So I need projects like this to keep me going. Remind me why. I get it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I get it. So um, in the past, we spoke about um, when we create the Mercedes truck with a container. Like yeah. I made the old metal because when you look at container, you, you know, the heavy, the weight, you know, and you want to think that um, visual feeling you have in your brain with your hand when you're holding it. Yeah. So it's the same as the movie card. Um, it's easy to say, oh, you know, there's a James Bond movie or there's a Fast and Furious movie. I create, let's make a model. We do a quick sale, you know, the people, yeah. the market. It kind of sells itself in yes. a sense. But for me, it, it's a little bit different. It's the same philosophy. Um, it, I think the card, the model itself, had to be kind of sync and connect with your image or in your mind, the character. Right. In the movie, right? And that had to balance out with what you created. Yeah. And that kind of extension from the movie, that still has to exist for me. And, and that's what, you know, all this. So, so for us to create a movie card, that's why we've been thinking, you know, if we're going to create a movie card, what the movie card will look like, the program will look like. Yeah. How could we make it different? Yeah. I, I love that. And I love that thinking because I think there is, and something we don't talk about a ton, obviously, the visual aspect of this and the functional aspect is really important. It's, yes. you know, what you see, how does it remind you of the real car, or whatever it conjures up. But there's a visceral element to it as well, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, a continuation of the vibe or whatever you want to say from, from Bond. And, like, yes. if, if that approaches into the films, yes. you want to take that same approach to these replicas. Yeah, like... Bonds, cool, elegant, or just say hypothetically, if we create a Fast Furious collection, yeah. then you want that raw street race look. Yes. You know, not, not as refined as Bond. It would be a, a different model. We had to figure out how we create a model, deliver that kind of feeling when you're right. looking at it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what I feel you had, at least that's how I like to approach my movie cars. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I am very, very excited for these. Is there any other things you want to mention about, about these or anything you want to share with collectors as we watch these roll out in the coming months? Um, no, I said we will keep everybody updated. Like I said, we are okay. still, you know, it's also a, a, a learning curve for us with licensor, with data and all that. So we, we expect first year will be a little bit bumpy. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we're achieving very good. The, the DB5, this is already a tooling stage. So this is not a prototype. This right. is already. It's, it's there. So, so we're making much better progress than I expected, but I still do expect a slower learning curve. Okay. But, you know, we keep everybody updated. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, irons in the fire with this, right? Yes. A lot of interested parties, not only the car makers, but obviously the studio and all that kind of stuff. And then... Yeah. And then and then you, right? Making <laughs> yes. sure that these are, are the way you want them to be to be done. This is very very exciting. I um, 
I think some of our collector friends will be able to see some of these, right? You're taking them with you? Yeah, the next stop will be in, uh, we just announced at the Beijing uh, Hobby Expo China. Yes, in China, yeah. And then um, there will be display in uh, Shizuoka a Hobby Show in Japan. Uh, so early May. Early May. Yeah, and then we will go to uh, NDX in Malaysia. Yeah. And I was there last year, and I yeah. can't make it this year, <laughs> and I'm heartbroken. But it'll be fun. I so the so the collectors in Malaysia, China, and Japan will get to see these in the coming months. Yes, and then we probably will you know switch or add some samples along the way. So who knows what will be there? Who knows what they'll see <laughs> yes. when they come? And among all the other things you'll be bringing with you. Yeah. For, from Mini GT. Yes, we, awesome. we also you know have a lot of sample from different series. Yeah. I'm eyeing them. I see them over there on the other side of the table. <laughs> yeah, uh, Glenn, this has been fantastic. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing this with us. I think it's a it's a very very exciting program, and and it will be really cool to see the Mini GT take right on yeah. these on these models on these very iconic models. So we'll watch as they go, and then we'll be hearing <laughs> from you again. I'm sure about this stuff. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Bye. Bye.